Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. This is the preview show for Powerlift, Powerlifting America Nationals, which is coming up this week. And with us, we've got one of our national competitors, Julia Williams, is in the house, 63 kilo lifter. We've also got Sam Sakura, who's been helping out with our media team for like the last six months. And then we got the newcomer to the media team. We got Marcus McFadden. He is what? What is your nickname? Is it the Problem Child of Powerlifting America? <laughs> Powerlifting America's bad boy, problem child, something like that. What is it? Um, um, Let me pull up yeah. your Instagram handle. Didn't you? No, I changed it. I, I changed it. No, we don't talk about that. All right. Powerlifting <laughs> America's problem child, Marcus <laughs> McFadden. Welcome right. to the don't show. Don't make it. Don't make it coin. All right. <laughs> Calling me out already. Um, <laughs> So we're going to go session by session um, as far as uh, the Power of the America Nationals is laid out into sessions, day one, day two, day three. And so we'll give you like a little session recap after we roll through each weight class. So to start off with, we're going to jump right into one of the biggest battles out there, and that's in the 47 kilo weight class. And in this weight class, we have two lifters, Heather Connor. She's the, you know, the queen of the 47s. Uh, she's dominated that weight class for a long time, has two world championships, should have four, but didn't get to go because of COVID and because of the split. She didn't get on the USVI team that went. So she could be a four-time world champion for all we know. And then we've got the young up-and-comer Jessica Espinal. And Jessica um, has put up a huge total this year at 412.5. She's super strong and coming onto the scene. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to our panelists, whoever wants to go first, and uh, give us give us what you think about the weight class, what you think about each of the lifters, and then a pick for who's going to win, and then uh, just a yes or no if they're going to hit the Carpino total. So the Carpino total is 401. They've both gone over that before, uh, 410 for Heather and 412.5 for Jessica. So with that, who would like to take this one? Um, I guess it starts off. Okay, that's okay. really you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh the Carpino total looks like it's 401. Um I have both of them hitting it. Um I think it's gonna be really close. I know Jessica, I don't know uh if her bench is um according to the the IP the new IPF standard. Um that might be a point of contention. Um, it's it's really close to call. I I mean, I think Heather might be pulling last, so you know she has the advantage there. But um, yeah, I mean that one's going to be close. I I can't really pick. All right. So if we had to press you, you have <laughs> to pick one of them. <laughs> it's a flip well, of the coin. You know, I, Heather's going to be pulling last, so um, I'll go with her. Okay. I'll go. But you think they'll both hit the Carpino one total, which for people who are listening, that basically is the qualifying total to make it onto the U.S. national team. And in this weight class, it's 401. So you think they'll both hit it, Julia? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't see either of them having a problem hitting the Carpino total and um, I think I remember Heather saying this might be the year that the U.S. sends two forty sevens um, to world. So we'll see about that. I mean, you know, they're both at the top on the world stage too. So might be Absolutely. a call. Absolutely. All right, Sam. What's your take? Um. Well, I mean, Jessica's training right now looks like it has been. Firing all cylinders. Um, Heather's has as well, though. Um, Heather just did that girl power meet in France. Did she pulled 420, um, which I believe is about the current, uh, world record for deadlift. So we know for a fact Heather's going to pull last. Whatever she needs to load on that bar to become the national champion, she's probably going to load up. Um, I think she's pulled 446 in training um, at a point, and I wouldn't be surprised if she loads of that or something similar um, in order to pull for the win. Um, I think Jessica has ironed out the uh, bench depth issues that she might have faced at the beginning of the year with the rule change. Uh, at least in training, it looked like she was hitting uh, what I believe is uh, the definition of the rule. Um, she had a pretty smooth 205 um, bench single with that. Um, and I think ultimately, it's just going to come down to who hits more attempts. Um, and then potentially, if they are very, very close, I do think that Heather has the opportunity to pull for the win and will uh, successfully execute that. Uh, I think also Heather's coming in 
uh, with a lot, a lot of fire under her because of what happened at Worlds last year. Um, but Jessica is also coming in um, on a tear, um, winning USAPL Nationals and then coming into Power the America, hitting a big total at a meet at a 47 kilo instead of 48. Um, and I think that it's going to be very close. Ultimately, though, I'm going to pay for Jessica to win. I think that her squad adventure is going to be too much for Heather to uh, catch up for or catch up to and might leave uh, Heather in a position where she's to pull something that she's maybe not particularly comfortable with pulling on meet day. Um, but I do think it's going to be very, very close. Um, my pick's Jessica, but I do believe that both of them will hit the Carpino score uh, without much issue at all. And I do I do agree with the take that this is a year that very likely we see two 47s from the U.S. go to Worlds. Yeah, that's a good point. It's possible that they could both go if they both hit the Carpino. It just depends on what happens in other weight classes and what happens at Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that I spoke with Heather uh, – Shout out to the Powerlifting America podcast. Uh, there's an interview with Heather that's up on YouTube right now. We'll get it out on Spotify and uh, Apple Music here soon. Um, she mentioned that, you know, she's she has no problem pulling a 200 kilo deadlift, um, which would be 10 over uh, what she did at Girl Power. And I think we've seen it in training that her deadlift is looking pretty good. So let's, you know, let's see. Maybe she will have to load up that 200 kilo deadlift. She said she'll pull whatever she has to to win. Um, so, but, uh, Marcus, what's your take on it? Um, I mean, there's not much that I can really add, except like my opinion. I do in fact believe that both of them will hit the Carpino. Um, I don't think that it's going to be an issue for them, but I do think that the score is going to be tight nonetheless. Um, you know, Heather, I just feel like Heather has that experience and the fact that she can and probably will be pulling last and, I think that, you know, she posted recently on her story talking about how uh, there were rumors going around about her back issues, but she has denied any allegations. She said that she's coming into this fully prepared for, you know, anything. And honestly, I think that I think that she has what it takes. You know, I don't think that Jessica is going to, you know, let her out easy. I think that's going to be really tight. I think it's going to probably go down to those last few pulls. But I think Heather is probably going to squeeze this one out. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of uh, Jess, you're talking about her training going really well. She's with the strength guys now. Um, like her training's been going really well. You know, the strength guys are gonna have. She's gonna have a great handler there. I don't know if it'll be Arian or who it will be that will be handling her. Her coach Jason Escrow will come on down, or uh, Jason Trumbly. I mean, will come on down and from Canada and and actually handle her in person. But you know, with the strength guys, like they're gonna be ready and they're definitely gonna. Uh, you know, put up a good game day performance. She's not going to mess up on a, like a miss load or something like this. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I'm not going to make any picks throughout this. I'm just going to moderate you guys and push you guys to make picks. Uh, since I'm a fan of every single lifter and power of America, I don't want to <laughs> pick sides. Um, and, but this one is like, like it's a toss up anyway, you know, um, it's a really hard one to pick. I think we're all in agreement that these lifters are both very capable of hitting 401 and, and beyond. And I think it'll be very exciting just to see if one of them unwraps something really special, you know, like getting up into the 410, 415 range, something like that. Um, and, and then, of course, if they could hit up something like 420, get into the range where they could be challenging for TIFF at Worlds, you know, um, and so we'll see. But yeah, also Heather did mention that, you know, throughout throughout lifting, there's always going to be some uh, you know, aches and pains and stuff like that. But yeah, she is healthy and ready to go. So, all right. Uh, Julia, did you have anything after you heard these guys commentary, uh, anything else that you want to add to the 47s? Um, no, not really. I mean, but you know, this is probably the matchup I'm looking forward to watching the most. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Daniela Mello versus uh, Amanda at Worlds. Like, I think it's going to be really close like that. And it's really going to come down to like the last, last deadlift. So, yeah. For sure. And anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, everything. No, yeah, you're right. This is this is one of the best matchups of the entire meet. And it's, it's a legend and a, a rising star going head to head. And their totals are pretty similar and they're both looking like the training's going really well. So I think it's going to be a really special matchup that everyone should tune in and watch. 
um, because they're both looking like they're going to be in their prime and they're going to do something special. So I think it's a great matchup. Definitely one to look for. All right. So let's move on to the 52 kilo weight class. Now over here, we basically have a three-way battle going on. Um, so for people know Aggie pulled out, so she's not going to be there. Uh, Juanita also, uh, I got inside information that, um, actually Mike Z signed her up in the first place. So I don't know if she even pulled out or if she was never intending on coming to this. Uh, but that's Mike Z's girlfriend. And so she's not, uh, she's not going to be there either. Um, and then, um, so what it leaves is the person with the highest total, Megan Hurlbert coached by chance Mitchell. She put up a four thirty five before we also have Jamie Fisher. She's a veteran of the game. Um, she's, you know, one mega nat. And then, um, behind her, we also have another person who's a veteran that's been competing for a long time. And that's Kate Cohen, who's got a three eighty five. She put up a three eighty five total, the Carpino or the qualifying total to make it onto the U S national team in this weight class is high. It's four thirty three point five. Um, so of the three women so far, only Megan has done that. And she did it at a local meet in Texas. And this is another meet in Texas. It'll feel like a local meet for her. So, um, let's jump right into it. Uh, Julia, who do you have in this weight class? Um, so I have Megan Hurlbert, um, taking it. Um, and I do have her hitting the, the Carpino total. I think that she can do that. Um, Jamie Fisher, um, she's, you know, she's a veteran. Um, she has a great bench and she's a great overall lifter too. Um, she has she has an outside chance of hitting the Carpino total. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, all three of these lifters are very um, experienced and they're very good lifters. And I think um, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think we'll see some really good lifting out of this, but I definitely have Megan Halbert taking it. Yeah, definitely the safe bet with someone who's already totaled, you know, quite a bit more than the others. Um, but go ahead, Sam. Um, yeah, I'm in agreement here. I think Megan Hurlburt is going to pull this one out. Um, I'd say it's likely she has the Carpino. Um, I know she's not cutting very much at all. Chance uh, on a podcast said that she's only cutting like two kilos. So it should be a pretty smooth, simple cut for her. So I think she'll be able to replicate around that 435, maybe even more. I know her training's been going really well recently. She's been benching 220 very consistently. Um, and she's been putting up some nice numbers in training. I think she'll be able to replicate that on the platform. Um, but on the other hand, though, we do have Jamie and Kate, who are both veterans of the sport. I do think that Jamie's going to be able to put up a closer fight with Megan. Um, I think there's a chance that, you know, if Megan maybe misses a few lifts here or there, that Jamie's just going to have that composure, hit a lot of her lifts, and make it very close. And potentially they'll have to end up pulling for the winner. Um, but ultimately, I think that Megan right now seems like she's in a pretty good command of that lead position. Um, I would say Jamie has a good chance to potentially um, take advantage of something if Megan – uh, potentially does not execute on meet day how she wants to. And then again, Kate also always have an outside chance just being a composed veteran who's a great lifter. Um, I think it's gonna be a fun watch though, for sure. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Jamie surprised us, but I'm gonna go with Megan. And I will say that if I had to pick if she will or will not hit the Carpino, I'll say she will hit the Carpino. That's my call. All right, that's a good, good analysis there, Sam. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you're thinking about Kate Cohen, she's got a big deadlift. Um, and she's also, I know she's been posting on her story that she's like under body weight for this weight class already. So she's not going to have any issues with, with weight and water cutting or anything like that. Uh, between Jamie and Meg, you know, Meg's, uh, got the Megan's, uh, I'm sorry, Megan Hurlbert, she's got the bigger deadlift. So she probably have that advantage in the end. Um, but like you said, she has not competed in this weight class before at 52. So she's got to uh, cut down and, and two kilos when you're only 50, like that's, that's a good chunk. Like that's, if you're 50 kilos and you're trying to cut two, that's like 10%, you know? Um, so that could be a huge factor on her, but on how she performs um, on the day. Um, uh, Paul, yeah. I, would, I would like to say that that would be four, that'd be a 4% cut. Uh, 10% of the 50 would be five kilos. All right. Oh yeah. 4%. Jesus. God, this is why you guys, are, a, you guys are supposed to be doing the math. You guys are supposed <laughs> to be doing the math, not me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, 4%. You're right. 4%. Okay. I guess 4% is okay. Yeah. Um, who knows though? All right, go ahead, Marcus. Um, I feel like it's all going to come down to whether or not uh, Megan can really hold on to that strength during this cut. And, you know, according to chance and according to her, you know, lifts on Instagram and all of that, I feel like, you know, you have not, there's not 
any training that I have seen that looks to be abnormal in terms of any regression. I think that she'll be able to hit this Carpino and I have her taking this. Um, I don't really see, I've been seeing the training, you know, from uh, Jamie Fisher, Kate Cohen, uh, specifically, I'm not confident about um, the current state of, you know, Jamie's squats, especially the depth. Um, I think that she probably, you know, will come out ahead with those, you know, squats and actually sink them. But, you know, I think that, you know, I think that Megan Hurlburt has a really straight shot here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm not sure if Julia mentioned this, but um, but when it comes to Jamie Fisher, there could be some question of, of the bench, the new IPF bench rule and how that might affect her. Um, she's been posting like kind of consistent, not not really a ton of stuff, not really showing a lot. Um, she's kind of a savvy veteran in that way, too. So maybe she's got something up her sleeve that we don't know. So, uh, Julia, did you have something you want to add? Oh, no, I yeah I, I think the bench rule um it's going to be interesting to see how it affects these lower weight classes um i think you know she might have issues with it but as you said she's a veteran and she knows how to adjust her training so i think she'll be able to manage it yeah um, she's she's good uh, i mean she's a very good very experienced lifter so i think she'll it, it'll it's just a matter of if it takes off some some weight or not um and then with Megan Hurlbrot, it's just, this is a first time um, seeing, getting her on like a big stage like this. Um, and she's going to get, she's going to be going up against um, someone with national championship experience. So it'll be very, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how it plays out with under the big lights and with all the pressure. Yeah. So, all right. Anyone else have anything else they want to add to this weight class or should we move on to the 57s? Um. Yeah, let's do it. Good. Yeah. All right. So here in the 57s, we've got arguably one of the biggest stars coming up in all of powerlifting with Natalie Richards. Um, she's already put up a huge 501 total. The qualifying total in this weight class is 478. So she's well above that already. Um, it looks like everything's going really good for her. The, on the other side, though, standing in her way, we've got Christina Paraki, um, Chrissy Max Power. She's a veteran of the game. She's overcome so many different obstacles in her career in the past. So there's no reason to think that she won't overcome this. She has been posting like nothing at all. So that you never know what that means. Sometimes that means things are going really good and she doesn't want to show it. Um, um, her best total is 445. So she's within striking distance of the qualifying total. But the big question mark is just that I don't think we've seen Chrissy Max Power's best best meet yet and given that she hasn't posted anything it'll be very curious to see um, how close she can get to pushing natalie richards um all right this time around let's uh start with the young man first marcus why don't you yeah sure your take um first? do you think that you could tell me um when was the time that uh christina put up the 445 christina's 445 uh yeah that was at at mega nationals when she won oh, okay, the yeah. national title um just this last summer so she's she's had some time to add to that. Yeah, um, I think that you know, with the Carpino at four seventy eight, I I see Natalie taking it, you know, with relative ease. Um, I honestly see her, you know, taking the entire thing. I think that you know there is going to be a fight, nonetheless, from Christina. But I just think that you know, there's with training going the way it is for her, I just don't see it potentially slipping up in a way that we haven't seen. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the big thing was her performance at mega nationals looking at like, whether there would be any kind of question about whether her deadlift is locked out or not. And, you know, she's, she's got Steve coaching her and everything. So it looks like that's been tightened up. Um, Sam, what do you think about this one? Uh, yeah, I think that it's not going to be potentially very tight in competition. I think that Natalie has rebounded from uh, her performance at Nationals. I mean, obviously what she did at Carolina Prime Time with that uh, total was pretty absurd. I think she had like 570 plus dots as well. Um, just a crazy performance. And I think now, especially under the guidance of Steve Denovi, she's in a great place. Her training looks very good. 
Uh, it seems that Steve has said that he basically ironed out like the tiny few things he had to iron out with her, and they've just been cruising ever since. Um, her training's been looking great. Uh, I have no doubt that she will uh, execute here. I think ever since the Nationals incident, she just had a fire under her, and she really doesn't look like she's been slowing down at all. And with Chrissy, we just haven't seen her training. Um, it's potential that Chrissy could uh, scare Natalie and make it a really close one. We just we don't really know. We haven't seen much of her training as of late. Um, but you know, Chrissy has experience. Um, she's a national champion multiple times, um, and I, I think that she has the ability to make it close. It's just you know we don't really know where her training's at. Uh, but ultimately, I think we go with Natalie, and I think uh, Natalie will likely win. And I do think that she will blow that Carpino likely out of the water um, if she needs to. Um, if she doesn't have to, I believe she'll do what she needs to to get that Carpino and move on. But uh, my pick's Natalie. All right. Yeah, that's good. Good pick. Safe pick. Um, good points all around. Go ahead, Julia. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what both of you have said. Um, I definitely you know, have Natalie um, hitting the Carpino. Um, it's going to be exciting to see um, how she's improved under uh, Steve. I think that was a really good call for a coach. Um, and it looks like her lifting is going really well. Um, you know, lockouts look solid. And um, I think she benched 242 pretty easily recently. So, I mean, yeah, she's going to put up a massive total. Um, Christina, I was actually at the meet. Um, we, we both did the same meet to qualify for um, nationals. And I think she took it pretty easy at that. I actually think she might have um, not taken her third deadlift. I'm not quite sure. Or timed um, out. She so might have her... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's showing um, on open powerlifting that she missed her third squat and her third deadlift, but like you were saying, maybe she just put in a number and then timed out. Yeah, I think that's, I actually think that's what she did now that I'm remembering. Um, I think that she can put up a pretty good total. I don't know if she'll hit the curve, you know, I don't, I have to say I have her falling a little bit short of it, but um, I still think she'll put up a massive total. And I think that she definitely has an outside chance of um, possibly hitting it. Uh, yeah. So she mentioned on her, on her uh, meet recap that she courtesy timed out on the third deadlift. Um, so maybe she actually did miss her third squat there. Um, but it'll be interesting to see because, you know, she's a good all around lifter, but she definitely has a big deadlift. And so, um, if she actually gets her third deadlift, maybe that could add some kilos onto the total. But, um, what, how excited are you all to see, like if Natalie wins this takes the, you know, gets the Carpino, which she's done before. Um, she's, you know, just earlier this year, she put up a five Oh one, the current world record in the 57 kilo weight class on total is by Ja Jacob and it's a four ninety five. So if she can just replicate 501 at Worlds, it could be good enough for a gold medal in the 57 kilo weight class, which is a stacked weight class at Worlds. You have a goat like Joy Namani, who's like one of the best and has been one of the best in these weight classes. Um, and then you got the rising other junior star in Ja Jacob. So what do you guys think about that? Um, I'm very excited to see. Um, I think if Natalie does win, I think that that world battle would be awesome. I think that would definitely be one of like the highlights of worlds for sure. And I think that those three are all going to, would all have like a very, very close battle. You know, everybody would be pulling for positioning on the podium and for the win. And I think it would be a, I think it'd be a awesome battle. I would look very much forward to that. It might even be my favorite uh, class, honestly, at that point on the female side at worlds this year, potentially, if that was the case. Yeah, for sure. Worlds. Think, Go ahead, Julia. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that that's going to be um, a really, really good battle. I, you know, there's been so much talk about um, the 47s and the 63s and what Leah Carolla are going to do. Um, and I think this one might be, might not have gotten its due. I know they're still talking a lot about it, but um, I think it's going to be great. They're all neck and neck. They really are, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. Oh no, I'm. I just wanted to say, I I think it's amazing, like um, that the 57s now are approaching 501. You know, 
500. Yeah. It's, I mean, that used to be a pretty shocking total for a 63. So yeah, breaking into the 500s, uh, I mean, 505 won Worlds um, in the 63s this year. All three lifters on the podium put up 505. And so, yeah, to see a 57, Natalie Richards pushing up into the fives. And I know Ja Jacob is young and she wants more as well and will be pushing up as, as well. And then we should mention too, like we'll get to see a rematch of the world's battle um, at Sheffield, which will be like a month out where I believe Joy and Jod did get one of the wild card spots. Um, so she'll be pulling, she'll be lifting there and I, and Joy won worlds. So she will also be at Sheffield. So that's going to be a great battle to, to see just like a month down the road. And then we'll have a clear picture um, going into worlds in June of like what all three women are capable of. And it's probably going to be super close. All right, Marcus, you got anything that you, else that you want to add to that? No, not really. I feel like we all covered it. I feel like as soon as, you know, we reach that, you know, you know, that international level, it's going to be an insane battle and I'm all here for it. For sure. All right. So we're, we're going in the order uh, that, that we'll see these lifters in at power of the American nationals, which is, this will all be happening on session one um, on the first day, which will be this upcoming Friday, starting at 4 PM. And the next session that we'll see after the 57s or the next lifters that we'll see in the same session after the 57s will be the 59 kilo men. Um, so we got to change gears here and think, flip over to the men's side and look at what we have going on in the 59 kilo class. We've got four lifters happening in this weight class, uh, lifting in this weight class. The front runner is Waskar Carpio. We'll talk a lot about him because um, he's the one that's going to be trying to hit the, the Carpino qualifying total for this, the Carpino one score is 613.5 for the 59 kilo class. Waskar is the one who's really close to, to getting to that. But behind him, we've got um, Dalton Laco. He's a, a, a former world champion from the juniors, and he's got a huge deadlift. He's put up a 559 before. Behind him, we got Mario Leos, who's an equipped lifter that's going raw, who's put up a 527 and a half. Um, and so we got some people that are there in the mid fives that are looking at possibly doing something in the mid fives. And then, uh, rounding out, we've got David Barubi. He's got 275. He's a young tw lifter junior going to be able to come and show out with some of these other world-class athletes like Waskar. So that'll be really cool. And if you look at the, everyone we've talked about so far in this session, there's so many, it's like a superstar studded session. So it'll be really cool for David to get that experience. But yeah, so the call, the qualifying total is 613.5. Waskar's done a 600 before. So let's, uh, who wants to start off on this one? I'll start go, us off this Go time. ahead, Sam. Um, yeah, so I think we're looking at Waskar as likely the favorite for this class this year. Um, but I wouldn't say that puts Dalton out of the running. Uh, I know Dalton in training was hitting, um, at least a few months ago, was hitting a bench 12.5 kilos over his meat best, I believe. Um, and then I also do um, see Dalton squatting a little more in training recently than he has uh, to meet before. But I also saw uh, Dalton's Instagram. It appeared like maybe he was injured. He said he hadn't deadlifted for weeks prior to his last deadlift post, which was about a month ago. So, you know, coming in with some uncertainty on deadlift, which is Dalton's lift, um, that's absolutely a specialty. Um, I, I think that it solidifies Wasker as the favorite here. Um, you know, we also don't know uh, how will Mario's transition be from equipped to raw, maybe it's great. And Mario shows up on the spot and does some crazy things. Um, but I do think that Waskar right now, his training's just, I mean, it's been looking great. Um, he really wants that uh, record deadlift. He really wants to hit that Carpino score and potentially more. I know he said uh, he wants to total around 622 and a half. Um, and I think that Wash is gonna take this. Um, I, I know he's not cutting as much as he used to in the past. So I think he's been in a pretty good position to just execute around what he's been doing in training on meet day. He also has Steve Novi's guidance, and I think that they've been doing great things together. Um, so ultimately, I'm going to pick Wasker for this one, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dalton makes it a closer battle than it may look on paper just from their meet best. Uh, we'll see what happens on meet day. Um, I'll, I'll take Wasker in this one, and I, I would say that he likely will hit the Carpino. Um, I know that's the goal he's going in there with uh, in his mind, so I'm going to say that uh, Wasker hits the Carpino here. All right. And Julio, what's your take? Um, 
Yeah, so same thing. Um, I have Oscar hitting the Carpino total, um, and I have him winning. Um, interesting thing about Dalton, I don't know if this is accurate, but I looked up his last total, and it says that he did it at 121 pounds body weight. Um, so he has room to grow into this class, um, oh, yeah. and this could potentially be a really good battle um, down the line. Um, but I think, you know, this year, I think Oscar is going to, is going to take it. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the numbers he's hitting, I mean, he's closing in on, you know, 1400. It's, it's pretty phenomenal as a 59 kilo lifter. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your picks. And then Marcus. Um, I think, I also think too that, you know, Oscar is going to hit the Carpino and I also haven't taken this. I just feel as though there's just simply not enough information about, you know, Mario and where he's at, especially with that transition. Um, I do think that, you know, Dalton, he's going to put up something respectable. And I think that he is going to, you know, do a lot better, you know, hit those PRs for himself, but I just don't see him being that big of an obstacle, especially with, you know, Wasker, you know, really shining through with his training right now. Yeah. So Dalton, just to give you guys some perspective, like Dalton's been lifting since 2013. He's 26 years old now. Um, he's got a lot of experience. And if you look back on his open power, I mentioned that he was a former junior world champion. He's a multi-time former junior world champion in a uh, single ply as well as raw. So this is a very experienced lifter that's done it at the highest level in the, in the age classes that he's competed in. So, um, I know that he doesn't post as much. He's not as well known. Everyone who does know him knows he's got a massive deadlift. So I think he might end up putting up a little bit of a bigger fight than people realize, but still six thirteen point five. I know that only in history, only four other lifters have ever done that. And, um, so I know that that, that qualifying total of six thirteen point five is a historic number. That's really far out there. Um, I can tell you that. Waskar recently, um, I was just looking on his Instagram and he recently pulled a 265 kilo deadlift in training that looked really clean and it looked like it moved really well. And like Sam mentioned, he's on, he's very close to being on body weight right now. Um, he's not very far off. And so his best in training, I'm going to pull the, pull up, uh, Waskar again, his, his best performance on deadlift in a meet is 245 kilos. So we're talking about adding 20 kilos just on his deadlift alone. If that's the only thing that he improves, he should be able to hit a 620 kilo uh, total and easily secure that Carpino score, that qualifying total to make it onto the U.S. national team. He told me, so shout out Power of the America podcast. Our first episode was with Waskar. You can go listen to an hour and a half interview that is on Apple and on, uh, on Spotify, and it's also on YouTube. And he talked on there a lot about that the number that he really wants to go for is Charlie Yang 622.5, which is the highest uh, total that we've ever seen from an American lifter. The, the only other people have been some, uh, a, father, a couple of other uh, 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 lifters from other countries, but the main person, you know, uh, in this weight class that everyone talks about is Sergei Fedoshenko, who's put up some ungodly numbers, like up into like, you know, the mid sixes and beyond. And um, so that number is probably out of reach, but if he can hit 622 and a half or break that, uh, if he can, if he can hit a national record on his deadlift, but perhaps and chip that 622 and a half or go all the way up to 625, it would be a very historic day. So even though the head to head battle may not be uh, super competitive, the feat that Waskar is going to be trying to pull off is going to be something that definitely everyone will want to watch um, because it'll definitely be a, a historic moment. All right. No worries, Julia. Go ahead. Grab your charger. It's all right. Um, so that's the 59 kilo weight class. Um, I did also want to just mention about Mario, uh, Mario Leos. Um, he's 29 now. This is someone who's from Texas and who competed throughout their high school career in Texas. So if you look at their open powerlifting, it's like 50 meets deep. Um, he's, he's definitely got a, uh, a, a lot of history in here and it looks like, uh, they're also in a, 
an equipped lifter that's going raw. So they've totaled 620 before their most recent meet was in Orlando for uh, equipped nationals last year. And they totaled 620 um, in single ply. Um, their best raw ever is 527 and a half, uh, which was also last year. So not too far off. So we might be able to expect them to bridge somewhere in between. It could end up being somewhere up in the, you know, uh, mid fives. There could end up being a battle between Dalton and Mario for second place, uh, just kind of depending on how each lifter comes into this. So that'll be something to watch out for too, where it should make for an exciting competition all the way down throughout the weight class, not just, you know, Waskar's date with destiny at the top. So you guys have anything else to add to this one? Um, yeah, I feel like we covered everything here. Um, I think you're right. I think it will be an interesting battle potentially, uh, for podium, but, uh, yeah, I got Waskar solidified there at the top. All right. Nothing from you, Marcus. No. All right. I feel you pumped, like, you know, you're pumped yeah. to see Mark. Are you pumped to see Waskar's performance? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm actually excited for this. I'm excited to see what he pulls. Yeah. Yeah. What weight class are you in Marcus? I'm 83. Okay. And yeah. I'm excited to talk about a certain someone who I'm going to be competing against in see like six weeks, I think. All right. So we'll get to that when we get to the 83s. Um, all right. So moving on in the session, the next set of lifters we'll be looking at will be the 66s and then the 74s. Uh, in the 66s, we've got a three-way battle here. Uh, we got three lifters that are all three of them are capable of doing something big. The qualifying total in the 66 kilo weight class is 702.5. So that used to be a big thing of like, if you break the 700 barrier, then you're probably going to win worlds or podium at worlds. Um, and that would have been the case this last year for sure at worlds. Um, now just to get on the U S national team, you got to do a 702.5 to make it onto the team. So in this class, we've got the defending national champion and silver medalist from worlds and Jonathan Garcia, he put up a 696 at worlds last year. So he's right there on the cusp. He's set the world record in the squad event. Um, he's a great person. Everyone loves him. So I think he's like, definitely like a fan favorite. He's like one of the nicest guys that you'll meet in powerlifting. Um, then we also got the returning, a former, uh, national champion from USAPL Rodrigo Manzo. He's put up a 670, but he's also, I don't believe he's competed at all since last nationals. Um, yeah, our last, our powerlifting American nationals last year in April was the last time that he's competed. So who knows he could, I mean, if he keeps progressing, um, he could be putting up, a, a, he could be adding a lot onto his total. Um, so which was at 670, he's got to put about 30 kilos on there in order to hit the qualifying total. And then finally, we got the young up and comer, Brian Lee, who has already hit 700 twice. Um, he's done a 705 and a 710. And he did the 710 recently at a power up in America local meet in Texas. So he's definitely the one that everyone's got their eyes on. Now it's going to be a good battle a three-way battle with potentially people having to make decisions based on what rodrigo is going to do if they want to finish uh in second place if they want to take second place if it looks like the qualifying total is out of reach there could be some interesting things happening with that but yeah let's kick this one over to julia first what do you got what do you think um so i think this is going to be a really interesting battle um i think that it is probably going to come down to the last deadlift and I think you know Brian Lee's going to pull last so um he has a, a little bit of an advantage there um but if Jonathan Garcia can put up a subtotal that puts it out of reach then you know that's that's something too I mean he's benching 180 kilos for triples at 66 kilos body weight um People talk about his squat, but his bench is way up there too. Um, so I think it's really going to come down to those two. I think Rodrigo is in there, um, but I think with those two, it's going to come down to the last pull. And if Brian can make it, um, he'll win. But I really don't know. I really don't know. If I had to pick, I would probably go with uh, Jonathan Garcia just because he has the experience and um, he's a little older. He performs well at meets. Um, he tends to hit lifts. So that's my bet. All right. What do you think, Sam? 
Um, well, I know Rodrigo Menzo has been battling injury for a while now. Um, so I, I don't particularly think he will progress a lot on the total, although he does have potential to uh, total more than he did last year at Nationals. Likely last year at Nationals, you know, he missed polls because he was trying to pull for placing against Jonathan. Um, but ultimately, Jonathan secured the win there. And I think this year is going to be a really, really big base off between Brian and Jonathan. Um, I think that Rodrigo is a dark horse candidate. Um, I think he's a dark horse candidate for potentially uh, top two, but I think for the top of the podium, number one, I think it's going to be a fight between Brian and Jonathan. Um, Jonathan is absolutely going to uh, be leading Brian by quite a lot on subtotal, but Brian's pull is so much farther out in front of Jonathan's that Brian is going to be in a position to pull for the win. Um, you know, Brian has uh, yet to pull that elusive 700 to meet, I believe, um, but I know that he's been very close. Um, and I think that if Brian can pull around that, I think he right now, at least the way his training looks, he should be in a good position to win. Um, Brian's squat death has looked a little questionable in training, uh, but I don't think it's anything to the point where he won't be able to correct it on meet day. He probably will sacrifice some from his training total uh, to his uh, total on meet day. But I do think that if Brian gets a squat around when he squatted his last meet, uh, benches around what he has benched in the past and has that big pull, I believe he will come out on top. But uh, we don't know all of Jonathan Garcia's training. Um, I think we've seen Jonathan post some triples, some massive triples. I mean, squatting five pounds or so under his uh, world record squat, uh, or, maybe, or sorry, one, sorry, literally one kilo under his world record squat for a triple, and then benching 180 keys for a triple as well. Um, I'm interested to see what his top end of strength looks like. Uh, I, I do think those numbers are indicators that he has uh, progressed those lifts a lot this offseason, and we you know we just don't see him posting a lot. He's not post a lot of his lifts on Instagram. Um, you know, I think he has a family. I think he has other things on life. Uh, I know he, I think he's a car salesman, so he's got other things going on. Um, so, you know, tra posting training isn't probably at the forefront of his mind. He also is probably doing it strategically. Um, I think that if uh, those triples uh, end up end him up at a top end strength, uh, like kind of the top end of what I believe he could hit, then I do think it's possible he has such a fat subtotal, it's almost impossible for Brian to pull or Brian to pull something he's uncomfortable with pulling for the win. So uh, I think if we have more transparency on what Jonathan's training was looking like, I might be more inclined to take him. But ultimately, uh, I'm I'm leaning Brian here. I do think it's going to be a great battle, though, and I think it'll be very interesting to see um, what Jonathan shows up like on the day. You know, maybe if Jonathan shows up squats like 280, 285 or something like crazy, um, I think it, it could be a very different ball game. But based on what we know and all the information we have, I'm going to pick Brian. And I think that he should be able to handily uh, total above the Carpino as he has in the past. All right. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're t looking at those triples, because Sam, you're also a coach. So you look at these triples and how fast they move. Um what do you think like those triples are right around what he already did at worlds last year when he put up a 696. So, I mean, if, if he's doing what he was doing for a single before for a triple now, how much do you think he'll be adding? Um, it, you know, it depends because, you know, part of this is also, he's doing this at his home gym. Uh, he is benching on a rope pad at the home gym, which does bolster the press a lot, especially if, for someone with such a technical bench as him. Uh, but I do think that, and the squat, you know, it's hard to see the depth on the angle he records from. I, it looks a little questionable, but, I, you know, Jonathan knows how to sink them. Uh, he has a world record squat for a reason. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say at least at the minimum, we're looking probably around 280, 277.5 on squat, maybe even more. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked by that. And then bench, probably, you know, at least 185, maybe 187.5. But, you know, on meet day, though, it's going to be different with longer commands, national standards. Uh, I think that we'll definitely see increases from his uh, world's meet numbers it's looking like, but it'll, it's hard to say how it'll pan out. But I would say at least adding 5 to 7.5 kilos on each is a, a pretty pretty safe bet. Okay, well, just based off the numbers that you said, uh, if he, like, does not something like 280 or something and he does uh, on bench, you're thinking he's going to do, what do you say, like 185? Um, around i'd guess yeah that's like that's approaching like a 20 kilos added on to his total from worlds which he did under very strict standards in south africa um while traveling so you you basically projecting that you could say you might not be surprised if he hits something like 720 if those triples translate yeah, i would say 715 to 720 yeah wouldn't shock me damn this 
Jonathan could put up something crazy. This is going to be exciting. All right, Marcus, sorry to keep you waiting. Go ahead. No, it's all good. I see this going one of two ways, and this is all really going to kind of depend on, you know, what Jonathan's going to do for these first two lifts here. I know that was it uh, nine weeks ago. Uh, Brian is currently coming off of a pec injury, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect his bench. Um, I know that – I know he's hungry for, you know, getting that 700-pound deadlift. And I know that it's probably going to come down to those last pulls. And, you know, if Jonathan can do something, you know, really well with, you know, squat and bench and put Brian in a position where he's going to have to pull something that, you know, like Sam mentioned, he's going to be uncomfortable with. But, you know, I feel like it could be that or, you know, Brian trying to go for something, trying to go for a huge PR and failing and, you know, that overall kind of messing up. His total, I know he's a young lifter, and I know that, you know, he does have good handling, but it's all going to depend on, you know, how he feels going into these deadlifts and if he thinks that he's ready to pull something and, you know, how that's actually going to translate to the platform. Who is his handler? Do you know? No, um, I'm looking right here. Um, Joe Game Day. Oh, okay. Where did he mention that? Um, in his most recent pin post. Um, okay. Right here from nine weeks ago saying uh, shout out to Joe game day for handling. Okay. Okay. So he does, he's going to have a top notch handler because that's going to be important because Jonathan Garcia is going to have Arian in his corner, coach Arian K on Instagram. And as I mean, if anyone, if you're a fan of the sport, you know, he's one of the best in the game, if not the best handler that's available out there. Um, So he's going to have that weapon there. That might be the deciding that might end up being the difference um, because I know Joe, Joe game day is also a really, really good handler as well. Um, Arian is like on another level, like, like national team head coach type level. Um, but yeah, let's see. I mean, uh, just for uh, shits here, it looks like, so Brian posted up an SBD total of 740 recently. Um, yeah. So what do you, what do you think about that? Uh, I think the, the squat death is pretty questionable and, you know, benching shirtless on an Alico pad uh, is also going to be pretty uh, not to the competition standard. So I think uh, considering those factors, you know, you got to look at that total. It's, it's a very impressive gym total. It's, it's crazy. You know, we're pushing the limits of what we ever thought was possible for 66s. But, you know, how is that 740 going to translate to the platform? Probably not uh, very strictly, uh, I would say. So just for a little bit more context, like, uh, in this in this training total, he posted a three twenty two and a half kilo deadlift that looked like I mean it looked pretty pretty good. Um, like maybe if he's cleaned it up a little, he might have been able to clean that up a little bit. But a seven twenty two and a half, um, or 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 wait, what was the number that I said? Uh, the three twenty two three three twenty two and a half. Um, oh, that's yeah. that's a big that would be a massive comp PR for him again, like in the range of like something like 15 kilos. Um, so again, if he puts that onto his 710, um, you know, he could be pushing up into this 720s, into the, into the mid 720s possibly. You're skeptical though, Sam. Yeah, I am skeptical. I think, um, <laughs> you know, the, the train is a training total, but you know, yeah. you know, the, the deadlift wasn't locked out for very long at all. And his, uh, I believe it was right, his right side, the shoulder appeared questionable on lockout as well. Um, I, I think all the lifts were slightly questionable. It's, a, it's an insane total, um, but I do think that likely, like looking at those three lifts, I would estimate him around like 715, 720 on beat day if everything's cleaned up. Maybe a little bit more. It might surprise us, but yeah. Yeah, maybe if he cleans up that deadlift a little bit. What do you think, yeah. Julia? What's your final thoughts on the uh, on this, on this uh, weight class? Um. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, you know, a 740 gym total is phenomenal, but um, I think the squat was definitely uh, questionable, to say the least. Um, and, you know, it, he has a high ceiling. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he puts up, but I don't think it is quite going to be 740. I think it's going to be more in the 720 range. So you'd say, uh, and, and thinking about what, what we were talking about with Jonathan, like the possibilities that he could put like 20 kilos on his, on his 697, um, 
So you think it's going to be pretty close then obviously you picked Jonathan to win it. So you probably think he's going to come in like where, what do you think? Like seven twenty, and maybe, uh, Brian, just a hair behind that. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, I think that he can, um, potentially put it out of reach with the subtotal and force Brian to maybe pull something that, um, you know, he may feel confident in, but just isn't quite, um, there on me dead. Um, he has, you know, he's been pulling well in training, but I think that overcoming a big sub total like that is a hard thing to do, um, mentally and physically, and that's a lot of pressure. So we'll see. We'll see. I have Jonathan, you know, I, I think I have him. Yeah. Yeah. And then just looking ahead, um, if Jonathan goes off to worlds, you know, we all know 66 is, it's going to be Panna. It's going to be, I guess, Joe Jordan's moved up. So, it, and mm -hmm. Eddie Bergwin has moved up. So mm -hmm. it's really just going to be Jonathan and Panna is what it's looking like. And I'm sure there's others that, that I'm leaving out off the top of my head. But um, if who, it looks like whoever wins this weight class is going to basically have a head to head battle with Panna for, for the world title. Um, so this could be a very lucrative one. If they both hit the the qualifying total, there's a possibility at least that maybe there's two 66s taken. Um, and the USA, USA could, you know, finish with two medals in that weight class. So that could be potentially interesting as well. So, um, and then just to round it out, like, uh, Brian, let's say he does like kind of what you guys are talking about, maybe comes up a little bit short, has to pull something crazy because of Jonathan's subtotal. Arian handles so well. So, you know, he's not going to let him off the hook easy with anything. Um, he's still a junior. I mean, he's, he's 22 in his last meet. He might be 23 now. So he still has another two years probably as a junior, um, depending on when his birthday is and everything like that. So, uh, I mean, it's pretty cool that if he ends up coming in second, he'll still probably make a world's team um, by making it onto the junior world team. And uh, he can go compete for team USA and try to win a, a junior world championship. So um, it'll be, it'll be interesting. I think both of them will end up with something. So, and maybe Rodrigo will make it onto the NAPF team and uh, he'll be on an international national team as well. So that'll be really cool. All right. So if there's nothing else on the 66s, um, the final, group of lifters that will be list, lifting in session one uh, on day one of powerlifting America nationals this upcoming Friday um, will be the 74 kilo weight class. And in this weight class, we've got the king of all of powerlifting, Taylor Atwood. And he, I just had a zoom call with him earlier today and he's definitely going to be there. He's definitely going to come and try to put up the car, the qualifying total to make it to secure his spot on the U S national team, which is a seven sixty nine point five. He's done well over that in the past. We know he's done the eight thirty eight and a half. and a half. We know that he cakewalked to a seven ninety total at worlds this year after traveling to South Africa under the strictest standards at IPF worlds. So a seven ninety something in that range wouldn't be out of, out of the question. Certainly a 769 and a half. He, he told me he's going to handle business. He's going to hit the qualifying total. And then he's going to stick around for the second day and cheer on everyone on the second day and then go to the Aleco barbecue, uh, and have a blast. And so that's what he's looking to do. Um, to in this weight class, we also have Nicholas Ferrison, um, who, is someone who's also got a good amount of experience, um, been competing since 2017, put up a 670 total. So probably not going to be able to get anywhere near that, that qualifying total or our challenge, obviously the goat Taylor Atwood. And then the last person in this weight class is Logan Dwyer's who had a 430 total. It's a low total, but he's 26 and he just started powerlifting this year. And he's going to be on the podium standing, uh, one foot away from Taylor Atwood. So, uh, it doesn't really matter what his total is. He basically was able to sign up and come to nationals lift alongside the goat in the same session and will be on the podium with the goat Taylor Atwood at the end. So, uh, Oh, so, you know, that's an amazing experience. If you know, that's one of the cool things about nationals is that we're bringing together athletes that just started this year and athletes that are like at the absolute, you know, putting up the greatest performances in all time history. And they're going to both be on the same platform. So it's a really cool thing. All right. So this is a pretty open and shut weight class, but let's go ahead and go through it. Julia, what do you think? 
Well, I'm really excited to see what kind of form Taylor is in because I think, um, you know, I don't think he's going to go all out, but regardless, you will get an idea of um, how strong he is going into Sheffield. And he's one of those lifters who is notorious for, you know, gaming it a little bit and um, not showing his cards. So um, we'll be able to get kind of an idea here um, where we usually wouldn't. Um, and then I think, um, you know, it's, it's pretty open and shut. I don't see either of the other two lifters um, getting the Carpino total, but um, Nicholas is an impressive lifter and shout out to Logan. He actually did four meets in 2022, which um, I don't think I've ever done four meets in a year. <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. So yeah, it should be, it should be good. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Taylor puts up and uh, what the other two lifters are capable of. So. Yeah, good point. It's it's going to be fun to watch Taylor and see where he's at and uh, just to hang out with him, be around him. He's such a great, great guy. Uh, let's kick it over to Marcus next. See, I I want to be, you know, as nice to the other lifters as possible. Um, however, it's just Taylor's just too insurmountable of an object. Um, I feel like it's it's pretty clear. I think, you know, I see Taylor hitting the Carpino. I mean, Taylor is the Carpino at this point. Um, I see him hitting that and I see him, you know, taking it all the way to world, you know, once again, I think that nonetheless, no matter where he is, I think that he's always an entertaining lifter to watch. And I'm really excited considering his reels, um, where he is mentally going into this because I know that he's, he probably will not be taking it, you know, to a hundred percent, but I know that he's going to go in there and, you know, really be kind of locked in and take it serious. Yeah, and I mean, he's always within striking distance of the 790.5, which is his world record. Um, so even on a, on a bad day, he might decide to put up a total that's bigger than the world record. What do you think, Sam? Uh, yeah, you know, it's cut and dry. I, I think Taylor, if I had to guess, he's literally going to come in and hit 770 on the dot just to barely chip that Carpino. Uh, I think he'll walk out. It'll be so easy that we'll have absolutely no clue what his top end is. Um, you know, hopefully that is the case. Um, I know he's been badly injury and such, but he doesn't post his top sets too much, but uh, I, I don't think that's what the case will be. Um, Nick, Nicholas Ferrison, though, uh, I've been in the game for, you know, six years, uh, done a lot of meets, and I think that he's also a good lifter, but, you know, it, it's hard when you are a good lifter and you are in the same competition area as Taylor Atwood. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we got Taylor, I got Taylor, I, I, I would say, if I had to say how certain I was, I would say he's by far the most confident I, uh, confidence I have than someone hitting that Carpino. Uh, he, he's probably going to do it, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, cool. Well, uh, that's a pretty easy one. Whenever you've got uh, the for king sure. of powerlifting in a weight class, it's pretty easy to pick. So, all right, so that wraps up session one. Um, so thoughts on overall on this session? Oh, man, can I start? Yeah. I think it's going to be extremely entertaining i feel like from start to finish you know starting you know with you know heather and jessica and moving all the way to taylor right at the end it's just it's going to be it's going to be a fun watch and i know that you know i'm not going to be there in person but i know that i'm definitely going to be one of the people that it's probably going to be like skipping school to watch something like this <laughs> i love that go ahead um yeah, um, I think it's going to be a really exciting session. I'm really excited to be down in Austin and help uh, get our media out for the team. Um, I, I think it's going to be awesome to watch. A lot of records going to be broken, a lot of battles. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for powerlifting battles. It's just it's awesome to watch head-to-head -head competition in the sport, um, especially head-to-heads where, you know, the, like each lifter has like a different style of uh, competition. You know, some like, someone like Jonathan Garcia is coming in with a, a massive subtotal, whereas Brian Lee has an opportunity to pull for the win. So, you know, it's interesting – to see that instead of, you know, two people who are going late lift for lift, I think it's a different, interesting perspective. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. I think all the battles are going to be great. And I think it's going to be a really nice way to start the weekend. Absolutely. Julia, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think it's a pretty stacked session. 
Um, there's just so many good lifters and there's so many good battles too. Um, you know, there might not be a ton of lifters in each category, but the ones who are there are really going to put up some big numbers. And I think, you know, it's going to be one of the most exciting sessions of powerlifting, you know, maybe this year. We'll see. I, I'm really looking forward to it. And I will be there watching in person. Oh um, yeah. I was, I asked you about that on Instagram. So yeah, you're going to come over and watch, uh, sit in the crowd yeah, the day before I, you lift. Yeah. It might not be the best idea, but I mean, I'm not going to miss this, you know? So yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys really nailed it. It's like the 47s, it's like an epic battle and you got a, a queen of the of the weight class and then you've got a rising star. 52s like Megan Hurlbrook might be the talk of the town after this. Um you could possibly give us a lifter that could go on and challenge Noemi Alibert in the 52s, which is a very difficult class in the IPF worlds. Um 57s we're looking at someone who's going to put up a number that probably will be 10 kilos over the world record. Um, which is like an, another historic day. Same thing with the 59. So with Waskar uh, and his date with destiny is like a 13 and a half kilo PR is what he needs. And he's like, no big deal. I got that. I'm coming for 622, not just 613. Um, so, I mean, I think across the board and then of course, you know, you get into the 66, you got that three-way battle that we just talked about. And then you got capping it all off. You know, the King gets to come out and parade around and take a few laps and uh, put up put up some big numbers and give us a little peek into what it, he may be holding up his sleeve for Sheffield, um, which I think is, you know, obviously going to be the next big thing after this. So it'll be really cool to see um, just like what kind of form he's in. And again, like you guys know, he's he's with the strength guys, super smart team, super smart. So like, I think, Sam, you're probably right when you said he's going to come in and just just barely chip the, the Carpino, put up a 770 on the dot and make it look easy, you know, like RPE seven, RPE six ish for him. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting day. Like I, that's an action packed day. I, I don't think, you know, in, in one session, you really see that much talent, um, at national meets very often. And so it's going to be a great session. All right. So let's take a quick little break here and then we'll come back and we'll hit up, uh, the next session. All right. Welcome back. We're going into session two now. Uh, session two is all men. It will be starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday, and it's the 83s, the 93s, and the 105s. So three of the best weight classes in powerlifting, usually some of the most competitive, and they do these weight classes are a little bit deeper. So we'll start off with the 83s. Um, the Carpino, the qualifying total making on the U S national team is eight twenty five point five, which I believe that nobody that is coming to this meet has ever done that total before. Um, it's a couple have gotten close. Deuce Gruden is the highest. He's got an eight seventeen and a half total. He's, he's coming over to power of team America. He did a qualifying meet, uh, at bench press nationals to get himself onto the power of team America roster. And, um, he, he mentioned there that he's uh, working with the strength guys now. So his training's probably kicking ass like everyone with the strength guys. And then of course, the other big challenger for him is the junior uh, who just aged out of junior Sean Jin, who's put up a seven ninety seven and a half and a half at worlds in Turkey at junior worlds in Turkey, which was just all he needed to do to win. It looked like at worlds, he's kind of coasting that he could have done a couple more. He, he probably could have done something like an 805 or something like that at worlds, um, pretty handily, pretty easily, it seems. Um, and then the rest of the weight class, if we look around a little bit, there's only two other lifters that are in the seven hundreds. And that is the young Alex Sidor. He is uh, a junior lifter. He'll probably be on the junior world's team. Again, he was an alternate that made it onto the junior world's team this last year. And he was one of the youngest competitors in the weight class, did a great job. Um, and then we've also got a master's lifter who's totaled into 705 and that's Jonathan Losa. He goes by Mike Losa, Oompa Loompa strong on Instagram. Mm -hmm. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Like he will lift in a session and then be spotting and loading in the next session. That's how amazing of a person that he is. He's very seasoned. He's traveled around. Um, he's done bench worlds. He's done the NAPFs in open and in masters. Um, he was actually the first world champion for powerlifting America in the M1 category. He won bench press worlds last year in his weight class. So he's a stud with tons of experience, tons of travel. 
um, and will definitely be able to perform on the day. So beyond that, the next closest competitor, we have John Tong, we've got Charles Williams, we've got Zachary Jones. Um, Zachary Jones is an equipped lifter that's coming over. Um, he, he mostly does equipped, but he also has done quite a few raw meets. He uh, is the North American champion in this weight class in equipped, uh, which, cause he just won that in Panama earlier this year, really great guy local to Austin. He's also a foodie. So if you need restaurant recommendations, make sure you check him out. Um, then we also got a 15 year old in this weight class that has already totaled 600 kilos and Jack Reynolds. Um, so we got a couple of people there into the 600s and then, uh, rounding out, we got Andrew Sardis, also a guy that's been on the North American powerlifting uh, team, uh, went down and competed in Panama, cool guy, um, self-declared king of powerlifting. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how if he, if he uh, puts up something to be worthy of that title in the 83 kilo weight class. But yeah, that's a basic summary of everyone we got. Um, oh, and then we've got also the, the, the actual last person is Elijah Morales. He's only been competing about a year. He's put up a 482.5, but we love to see it. Um, and it's going to be a great, it's going to create a good flight because we got a, almost a whole flight of 83s here. Um, so that will make it so that the, at the top between Deuce and Sean and even Alex Sidor and Mike, <clears throat> Mike Losa, that they got plenty of time so that they'll be able to put up, you know, big numbers and it won't be, uh, too rushed for them to have to, you know, it won't affect their performance in that way. So, all right. So let's let the powerlifting america's problem child uh marcus the 83 kilo <laughs> sure what are you a junior or sub junior marcus sub junior all right so let's let the 83 kilo sub junior um go ahead and talk on this weight class so the first thing i mean i'll save it for last because i i, I find it to be something very special to me personally um however you know the battle between you know deuce and sean um, it's, I think it's going to be a tight one. I think I have, you know, Sean squeezing over this. Um, I think that he's just going to barely squeeze that uh, Carpino. And honestly, it's going to be a tough one, personally, from my perspective. Um, but I know that John Jun has that experience, you know, with those high-level competitions. And I think that's going to really put me, you know, in that favor. Um, specifically for... You know, the, the age difference here, you know, from masters all the way to uh, sub junior. Um, I wanted to just quickly just cover Jack Reynolds because um, he's going to be one of the people that um, I'm competing with in uh, not only high school nationals in April, but also sub junior nationals in June. And I'm excited to see what he does here because I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to go in here, you know, give it his all because that is going to probably affect how he's going to, you know, work out here at high school nationals. But at the same time, if I see him and the lifts that he does and it's easy, then I feel like it's only just going to make me excited to compete with him, knowing that he's saving something in the tank for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's going to be exciting. It's, it's, you're right. The, the age range in this is super cool. And that Jack is like, he's up there. I mean, he might be yeah. finishing like fourth or something, fifth, maybe. So go ahead. Uh, who wants to go next? Sam, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, I think this one's to be very interesting. Um, I think in the past, you know, it's always been, you know, Deuce doesn't post on Instagram, but he's going to put up basically the exact same total every time or very close to it. Uh, he's very consistent. Um, he would have had a higher total of nationals uh, in the past if he had found his third deadlift. But um, I, I think that Deuce, uh, he has new guidance now, and I, I think he potentially will uh, total above what he had been totaling pretty consistent in the past. Um, and, you know, then we have Sean Jin, uh, who will be his closest competition likely. Uh, and, you know, Sean, it, it appeared he was injured uh, during parts of his prep. He wasn't posting a lot of super heavy work until very recently uh he just had a pretty monstrous i believe it was an spd day uh this weekend and it was pretty close to um it, it would indicate strength pretty close to what he had at worlds uh, however he just hasn't really touched uh those numbers that he was taking at worlds and then post uh, pretty soon after worlds uh he hasn't really touched those numbers uh, in a while um, but i know that he is going to give us all this meat and it would not surprise me at all if he totals around 820 um and pulls that out um 
I think that, you know, one and two are pretty clear cut with uh, Deuce and Sean. Uh, then third, uh, I, I would say Sador uh, is a pretty likely candidate for third. Sador uh, started getting guidance from John Song as a coach. Uh, his training has been looking a lot more consistently recently and it's been trending upwards. Uh, you know, I know he's battling pec injuries uh, and uh, potentially maybe even lower body injuries. Um, and he's battled through those perfectly with John. And it looks like his training is on the up and up again. He just took some big numbers uh, in training this week, I believe 606 squat, which would be. Um, five kilos over what he did at um, Worlds and 2.5 over what he did at Power to American Nationals last year. Um, I think that's the door's training has been looking pretty solid and I expect him to take that third on the podium uh, pretty safely. Um, and yeah, I also would like to shout out Jack Reynolds. Uh, he's 15 and he's been progressing a uh, pretty insane rate. You know, this is a 15 year old 83 kilo who's like betching around like 350 pretty casually, which yeah. is um, pretty nuts um pretty pretty crazy um very respectable um jack's been uh really progressing a lot uh, since his last meet that he did i believe that was um the meet that meg uh hosted potentially um mm -hmm. he did great at that meet and he's just been uh progressing really well ever since so i think it'll be cool to see what he does um and then you know jonathan losa uh very seasoned i think we can expect around a around um a 700 total from him and i think that he'll uh submit uh submit his uh place on the podium and then uh, John Tong, younger lifter, uh, I, again, we'll probably see, you know, around what his previous best total is on the platform here. Um, I would say my pick for the winner, um, I'm going to go Deuce Gruden. I think, um, you know, we, we don't see literally any of his training. Usually we get at least like one heavy squat from his prep that he posts on Instagram from like the weight, Raiders weight room or maybe like quite or quit, but literally just, literally just uh, nothing from this prep. But I think that could be a good thing. And I know with the strength guys, I know he's under some really good guidance. I think um, it would surprise me if this uh, new style of training and approach to everything leads to him uh, progressing that total. You know, he's a veteran for a while. Um, and he has a very stressful life. Um, if you're on an NFL staff, you know, you have a pretty stressful life. Um, and I, I, but I do believe that Deuce is going to pull this one out. Uh, and I, I would like to see what Sean puts up on the day and see what Deuce puts up on the day. I think both of them could shock everybody in total much above what they have in the past. I'm going to go with Deuce, and then I will say that I believe he will pull for the Carpino score, and if he can lock it out, which I believe he probably will fix his issues that he's had in the past with meets um, with strength guys, I bet he will, and I'm taking Deuce to win and to hit the Carpino as well. Wow, all right. So you got Deuce putting up a little bit, like maybe about um, an eight-kilo PR to yeah. secure the – qualifying total and make it onto the u.s national team and what do you think uh sean's gonna be just right there on his heels like maybe like a yeah i, I like think 22 or something yeah i think that this is a case where the totals uh might not end up very close because someone's going to pull for placement but i do think that they're going to be neck and neck the whole time and that sean might have to load something he's a bit uncomfortable loading um in order to uh secure that first place all right. Good analysis there from Coach Sakura. Um, all right, Julia, what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I would I'd love to see them both um hit the Carpino total. Um, I think they both have the potential to. Um, but it really is gonna come down to, you know, the last poll. Um I you know, they both have a lot going for them in terms of, you know. Deuce knows he's a veteran. He knows how to handle himself. He has um, great coaching um, this time around. And Sean put up a nine, or uh, sorry, a 797.5 kilo total, you know, halfway around the world um, with more in the tank. Um, he just reached out of juniors. So he's improving pretty fast. And um, I don't really know where his ceiling is, but um, I'll pick Sean, um, <laughs> I guess. I'll pick Sean All right. just to, to pick a different, to pick the other person. Um, and once again, um, shout out to, you know, it's amazing uh, Jack Reynolds totaling 600 kilos at, I think he was 14 when he did it too, right? So yeah. yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. 
Yeah, Jack Reynolds is crazy. He's going to be a, a fan favorite. Um, yeah, he's 14, he, he was 14, maybe he's 15 now. Um, but that's really exciting. Um, yeah, just to put in some, you know, Sean's most recent, like we talked about, it did seem like he was injured. I'm not exactly sure with what. I thought he had a pec uh, injury or something at some point that was affecting his bench in this prep since Junior Worlds. Um, and but yes, he recently hit a 187.5 that moved extremely well on bench, and his best bench ever before that was a 190. Uh, or I guess he's hit a 190.5 um, at at, uh, at Junior Nationals last year to chip the American record. But he put up a 190 at Worlds, and he did a 187.5. Looked super fast, like he easily could possibly hit something like uh, a 192 and a half or. Um, a 195 for a bench PR for sure. Um, and yeah, he also squatted 285, which is right under what he did um, at Worlds. He did a 292.5. So 285 is like is like right there. It did look a little bit like there was some resistance there. It didn't move like air. But again, like Sam was saying, he, if, with his injuries and stuff, he's just kind of getting acclimated to those heavy weights again. And so still moved pretty quick and easy for him. So it looks like he's pacing to be like, right where he was at worlds with the 797 and a half plus a little uh it looks like the bench for sure and maybe a little bit on squat and then on deadlift i think he pulled like 285 for four which his best uh before that you know in competitions 315 so it's kind of hard to translate a four how does that translate into a, a single you know but um if he can put up something like around 320 or 325 somewhere in that range then he could get close to hitting this carpino uh, qualifying total he just for you know he has said on his instagram account today and he said it uh, in this most recent post that he's gonna hit a 10 times body weight total um which is if if my math is right sam double check me uh it <laughs> should be like 830 kilos right uh don't tell me i'm wrong on this one uh, it should be like 830 kilos. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's going to be, he's, that would be a barely, you know, four and a half kilos above the qualifying total. So he's confident and he predicted his numbers very accurately at worlds. Um, thought he was going to do like, like right around 800 did, did what it took to win. Um, and it, everything moved quick and easy. So yeah. Um, uh, Sam, you want to say something? Oh, no. Your hand no, no, raised no, up. No. No. <laughs> no, you're, you're like you're um, like hold on i got something my bad <laughs> but no this it's, it's like we started off with from top to bottom this is a very cool weight class i'm really excited to see it and marcus did you have anything else that you wanted to add on the end of this um mr reynolds good luck you're you're coming <laughs> for him marcus i'm not coming for him how old, how old are you marcus i'm 18 so i'm an old man Compared to um him. yeah and i know that i'm i'm gonna you know taste a little bit of victory and then let him have the rest once i age out but i know that no matter where he goes it's gonna be an absolute like real entertaining thing to watch him i mean 300 plus bench at 15 years old is just it's not not normal that's not you don't see that Absolutely. And he's got a lot of time left in the sub juniors. So, I mean, after you age out, I mean, this could be the Jack Reynolds show for a while uh, in the sub juniors uh, with a lot of gold medals coming back for Team USA. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well. He stays healthy and keeps training and sticks with the sport because he's definitely got a bright future. All right. So let's move on over now to the 93s. All right. So arguably um, one of the most the biggest battles in all of powerlifting american nationals um at the top of this weight class we've got the reigning national runner-up and the reigning world champion and very close to being a, a, one of the best lifters at worlds as well didn't he finish like in in a second place uh it as as a best lifter at worlds this last year and that's chance mitchell um so he's got the world record he's also got uh the reigning world championship um, but he has to go to Sheffield a month later. So that's a big factor of into like, what is it exactly that he's going to be able to do in this weight class? He's got to hit an 868 to qualify for the, to lock himself in on the U S national team. He's more than capable of doing that. He's hit 878.5. Um, so he's, he's, you know, should be able to hit that. No problem. 
And then we've also got one of the legends of the sport. We got Bryce Lewis coming in. Um, he's moved over to Power 15 American Nationals. He's going to try and make it onto the U.S. national team. At 93, he's done at 837 and a half. So he's a little he's a little bit below that 868, but we haven't really seen too much training on him recently either. Um, like he hasn't been posting too much in the run up to nationals, but he did in the run up to his local meet. So we can see what that's all about. And then the others in this weight class, we've got Gavin Aiden is on the roster, but my the rumor is is that he's not coming to Power 15 American Nationals, which might be a smart move since he's got a, he's also invited to Sheffield, which will be a month out. If he does show up, he's more than capable of going toe to toe with Chance. He's done at 880 before. Um, you know, Chance has done at 878.5, and so you know we're we're right in there. Do I have all these numbers right? Are these the right numbers for Chance? 878.5 is that his best? I think that's why he took at Worlds, which I believe was his best. If yeah, I'm not mistaken. I believe so. So yeah. okay. All right, and then. Um, also in this weight class, we've got Wesley Mull, who I don't know too much about sitting at 725. Um, so if it's chance and, oh, I'm sorry, the, if it's chance and Bryce at the top, um, looking at somewhere around that, that qualifying total of 870, we've also got another legend in the sport, um, who is Gregory Johnson, who's coming over from USVI. He's switching to team USA power in America. He's also an equipped lifter. Um, he, you might have seen on Instagram, uh, he pulled uh, an equipped world record re- at, at Open Worlds this last November, and it went viral. It was all over Instagram. Um, he's, he's a great guy. From what I've heard, I haven't met him myself, but everyone's telling me he's one of the nicest. He's got an amazing smile, all this. One of the people that you really want to cheer for. Um, and so he's got an 840 total, so he's right there in that mix. Um, I mean... At 93, like in our notes, we've got that Bryce Lewis is only total 837 and a half. So Gregory Johnson could be right there in a battle for second place for a silver medal. Um, and then behind those, we've got at 725, Wesley Mull. And then uh, someone I want to mention is we got at 639, uh, Jonathan Rivera. He's a guest lifter coming over from Puerto Rico. He's on the Puerto Rico uh, Puerto Rico's IPF team. And it's just really cool to kind of like give uh, so bring in some international lifters, you know, and let them be on the same stage with someone like Chance Mitchell or Gavin Aiden or, you know, the same same platform that we're talking about with Sean Jan and Deuce Gruden, same session as them. So it's a really cool feature of Power of the American Nationals that we get because we are the IPF affiliate. Anyone in the IPF can come and guest lift at our meets. Um, and you'll see that he's going to bring a couple people with him from Puerto Rico. And they're super emotional and super excited about coming to this meet. So um, I'll be really excited to see what he does. Uh, I know he's going to be being coached and handled by Matt Gary. So it should be a hell of an experience for him uh, to kind of get the knowledge and then bring it back to Puerto Rico and show him how it's done. So um, that's a feel good story for sure. in the 93s. All right, let's kick it over to Julia on this one to go first and uh, give us your take. Okay. So um, I, I, Actually, um, might have Bryce Lewis taking this because I think, you know, um, Gavin Aiden, if he shows up and Chance Mitchell, um, they both have Sheffield to worry about. And I would think that they're, um, you know, not going to try to go all out. Although you never know with Chance. Um, he is known for um, not exactly deloading. Um, and I think he's the one who said, uh, never recover or something that's his motto so um you know you never know um what he's gonna do but i i that's a think Drake song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think um yeah i think i have uh bryce taking this just um just because of this um i will say i've met gregory johnson um at nationals in 2019 and yeah he's super nice he's it's super fun to watch him lift i remember his deadlift at the end um it was just like a moment you know um so he can he can really put on a show um super nice guy looking forward to seeing him lift i think he was in the 105s for a while and then he he dropped back down um so yeah yeah he was 
Um, yep. In 2016 or 2019, he was in the 105s. Yeah, um, but just just um, just because Chance has Sheffield to worry about, I'm going to give the edge to, to Bryce Lewis. Interesting, interesting, because then it's kind of like a question of if if Chance – uh, can't do it, then then why come to uh, Power of the American Nationals and not just save yourself 100% for Sheffield? Um, that's interesting because there's definitely going to be some strategy. And like you said, um, he does have to think about uh, what he's got to do a month later at Sheffield. All right. What do you guys think? Um, I think I'm next. Um, I, I think that chance is going to come in and I, I think he's going to give full fledged effort here. Um, chances training is, yeah, it's notoriously very intense throughout prep. You know, he barely tapers any of his volume off coming to meet day and it's been working really well. Um, chance is just, yeah, I, I think that he's already been doing some pretty intense training. Um, he doesn't post his top sets ever, uh, on his uh, actual story, but the thing, the sets he does post are indicative that he's been taking some pretty intensive top end, uh, lifts already um, his bench he does post a lot and it's been uh it's definitely been crushing and i do think that the changes that he's made to advance programming and tech a little bit um since worlds have are definitely indicative that he will uh bench more uh at nationals here than he did at worlds so i think that we could definitely see uh, a pretty casual maybe like a 430 or something from chance uh you know add five kilos or so to his bench um and i think that he is going to give uh max effort here um i i think that um, that will be the case. And then I think um, it will be a battle between him and Bryce, but if chance goes all out or, you know, pretty close to all out, I think chance can handily beat Bryce. Um, we saw at Bryce's local meet uh, that he did to qualify. He, I believe he failed his third bench, um, which like, you know, if we're just going to get a qualifying total local meet, it's slightly concerning. Um, you know, that is probably like the one lift that Bryce uh, tends to have some issues with execution on meet day or just, you know, maybe just attempt selection. But Bryce Lewis is still Bryce Lewis. I think he's going to definitely PR that total that he put up at that local meet. Uh, Nationals here as a 93. You know, 93 is new to him. He's been a 105 uh, for a while. Um, and I think that this is definitely his weight class. Um, I'll be interested to see what he puts up on meet day. Um, I think that chance isn't coming here unless he is coming to put up the Carpino because he's doing he's – he's a gamer, right? He's – doing this very strategically to secure that Carpino um, ice out Bryce of a world's team spot possibly um, and make it more likely that he will go back to world to defend his title. Um, so I, I think that chance is probably going to edge it out over Bryce. Um, and then Greg Johnson, you know, it'd be awesome to see him lift just a monstrous deadlift. Um, just an awesome equipped superstar competed at world games. Uh, I believe I didn't have the meat he wanted there, but you know, that is equipped. Uh, and I think he mentioned that, that, the variability in his performance there was because of the equipment. So maybe, you know, it comes to raw has a pretty consistent, great performance. Yeah. I'd be excited to see what he does on meet day here. Raw. Um, he's a beast. Um, he only went three and, for nine at world games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, which I, you know, I think it's also just equipped. It's a very different sport than raw lifting. And I think that it's easier to make those attempts uh, with less variables going against you uh, for raw lifting. So I would like to see what Greg puts up. I bet he will put up a very nice total. I, I bet he's going to master pull. Um, you know, maybe not completely rivaling chances, but pretty, I mean, it, it'll probably be in the realm of chances, which is cool to see considering how monstrous chances pull is. Uh, but ultimately in this class, I think chance is coming here solely to secure that Carpino and ice anybody else's, uh, world hopes. Uh, I, I've got chance winning this class and I, I think he's going to hit the Carpino. I think there, he's not, he's not coming here to waste his time and not hit the Carpino. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, give me chance. Mm -hmm. All right, Marcus, what do you think, man? Um, I just think that, first off, I just want to, like, preface this by saying that I just think that it's really cool, and I just think that it's not something that a lot of people have covered. It's just, like, the amount of people that have been, like, migrating to powerlifting America as a whole, including, like, you have people, like, guest lifting all the way from Puerto Rico. I just think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of this weight class, um, I'm going to have to agree with Sam here. I think that, you know, Chance is here. He's, he's coming. He's coming to solidify a nice total, get that Carpino, you know, kick Bryce out of the running here for the world. And I think that there wouldn't be a reason for him to, you know, show up in the first place when he can just show up fresh for Sheffield um, if he's not here to really just solidify something good. And, and I think that 
whether he does that or, you know, we could be wrong and he just shows up to, you know, have a little stroll around the park. I just think that watching him is entertaining. And I think that the class itself is going to be something that I'm going to be watching. For sure. This is one of the more storied weight classes here. We got, you know, four, two former world champions going against each other in this weight class. And then we've got some other cool storylines like Jonathan Rivera coming from Puerto Rico. Um, Julia, did you, was there anything that you wanted to add to this um, on this one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I just, my question would be, so if he were to hit the Carpino total at Sheffield, it would not be as good as if he hits it at nationals and that's why people yeah. think that he's okay because yeah. the, the question would be um so let's say like we're going through these weight classes and you can see that almost every weight class someone's going to be hitting that qualifying total so there's not going to be a lot of open spots that are going to go to the sheffield lifters and there's we have like i believe is it four men competing over there and there might only be one spot um, so that's why you see like Taylor is also coming in to just to secure it because you don't want to leave anything to chance. I mean, um, in terms of, uh, what could happen between now and Sheffield, um, also the, sh the, the refing at Sheffield, if we look at how euros was officiated, um, you know, there could be some, some question marks over there. And then I think it also frees him up a little bit to just do whatever's necessary at Sheffield to win the money. Um, because he knows, you know, he can pull, he can pull a bit, make a big pull and he doesn't have to worry about possibly missing the Carpino or something at Sheffield. So that might be the way. And I, and he mentioned on the King of the Lifts podcast, he was definitely coming and coming to win it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that, that definitely, um, changes things. I didn't realize that the, um, you, you know, winning your weight class and hitting the Carpino total puts you, um, automatically in that spot um yeah. so yeah i mean that definitely that definitely changes things then um then you know yeah i would i would have to go with chance at that point because he i do think he is capable of a higher total and if he is indeed gonna go all out which is a very chance mitchell thing to do then um yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he just needs to hit like an 870 uh, to, to, you know, secure the dub and secure the qualifying total. And then he's on punches his ticket to Malta. Um, but I do find it interesting because if you look at Bryce, um, he did 845 at 90, three kilos less um, at Mega Nationals, 845. So that puts him up just a little bit over that 837 and a half that we were talking about that he did at his local meet that local meet he did leave two lifts out there um as well you know and he was he, he was trending really well going into that local meet he was posting stuff posting big deadlifts and weight that he had, hadn't hit in a while stuff like this and um it looked like tr everything was going really well and then the performance was just like a little bit lackluster um so i'm curious i mean i think he could be due for something really big because he hit 837 and a half at his first, uh, when he first dropped down, cut all the way down to 90. So you'd think now fast forward, you know, it's been almost a year since he's done that. Um, it looks like, you know, he's probably going to put some kilos on his total This is Bryce Lewis. We're talking about here. You know, he's got one of the best coaches in the game. He trains hard. You see, he's at the gym all the time, at least, um, even if he's not posting his top sets and stuff like that. So I think this is going to be a really tight one and it's a little bit like we don't really know what Bryce Lewis is capable of. I think everyone expects that as long as chance is healthy, he's good for, you know, 870 and beyond, which, you know, he's proven before. Um, and then he can just sort of just try to stay ahead of Bryce to get the, to get the win. We know that chance ha is, has a big deadlift, so he'll probably just load up what's necessary at the end to win. Um, so I don't know. It'll be a very interesting one. I think that's going to be a tough one just because if you look back in Bryce Lewis's history as well, like at, at 105, he's put up a hundred kilos more than this, you know? So like there has to be something to be said for someone who's put up like a couple of totals into the nine hundreds that, that there's still more in the tank for him that he's not going to just be stuck at 837 and a half. Like he's probably going to hit something like around the, the qualifying total 868 or 860 somewhere in that range would be my guess. So anyway, but that that's an exciting one. Anyone else have any final thoughts on 93s before we move on? No. All right. So moving on to the one Oh fives, 
All right. So in the one Oh fives, um, we've got like six lifters, but we've got one lifter. That's really steadying head and shoulders above the rest. The qualifying total in the one Oh fives is a big one. It's 901.5. So that is really the question mark is if any of these six lifters are going to be able to hit that qualifying total, the closest one right now is Justin Rogers, 857 and a half captain America on Instagram. Um, great guy, great lifter. He's hasn't been training. He's kind of took some time off of powerlifting. He's got a very busy life outside of powerlifting. Um, he's graduating with an MBA from rice, which is a great university. And I know he's already got a job lined up for the fall. So this is like his last push through, uh, he was going to hit up a bunch of, you know, national meets and possibly get onto the world's team. Um, and so this is kind of like his last hurrah. So it's a really kind of a question mark. He put up an 857.5 before, but we know he's been trending in the right direction. He's going to be able to do something more than that. Um, and then behind him, it's really interesting because the second place finisher is probably going to be Carlos Santoloquido, who is a 44 year old. Um, so very interesting masters lifter. That's that has totaled 820 in the past. Um, I believe Carlos is coming over from equipped as well. No, he's been all raw. Um, just, I mean, he's been lifting since 2010. So super OG veteran here. Um, <laughs> And I mean, damn, 820 at 44 years old, like he's probably going to make it onto the Masters World team and go win a, a gold medal with, on the Masters team um, if he doesn't, you know, challenge Justin Rogers in this weight class. And then behind them, uh, we've got, it looks like Nathan Dunn will probably be the one who's going to finish in third. He's put up a 652 before. He's only 23 years old. He's a young lifter. He's a great guy. He was on the North American powerlifting team this last year on the U S national team for North Americans. And, um, he finished in second place down in Panama. So really good guy is he's, he's, he's progressing. He's making, uh, he's got a good coach, Bill McCarthy. And then after that, we've got, uh, Michael Bosquez, who's a junior, um, put up a six ten uh, before, uh, we got Alan Morello's also a 24 year old. He's got a 607 and a half. He's only 24. He hangs out with Marty Egos and that crowd there in Dallas and a great group of people. Um, everyone in that, in that crowd is really cool. He went all the way over to Turkey just to handle and support a couple of lifters, uh, that him and Marty coach. Um, and you know, cause they, they had like three lifters, I believe that were competing it from their crew over there in worlds. And so, I mean, that's a, tells you what kind of guy he is going to travel across the world just to help out some of his, his, uh, lifting partners from his gym. And then, um, beyond that, we've got Connor Doik, a 22 year old putting up a 575. So that's where we stand in the one Oh five. So, all right, let's, uh, start off with Marcus this time. What do you think, Marcus? Um, see, my thought was, you know, I think that we should start with Mr. One Oh five himself. Who is it? You know, Oh, Sam. Uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that you're a, a 105, Sam. All right, Sam. Yeah, he's yeah a let's, big boy. let's let's go over to our junior, hopefully future junior world champion, Sam. 105. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I think Justin Rogers has this one pretty much in the bag. Um, you know, it's it's always you never really can tell from his training. He posts like his training pretty sporadically and posts like variation lifts um you know here and there but i know he's a very busy man um i think he's gonna win the class um i don't think that he's gonna hit that carpino i just don't i don't think that's gonna be within reach for him but i think he'll pretty handily win this class um it'll be interesting to see what he puts up uh you know he, he's benching around 500 uh as a 105 which is pretty crazy um he benched 507 at bench nationals i believe um he's just a massive bench uh, and a pretty pretty nice squad as well uh, you know, that deadlift is the only thing that's not quite up there with those, but not to say he's not an insane lifter. Um, but I, I think he's going to run away with it. Um, and then I think, you know, Carlos uh, San Lakito, uh, I think he's definitely going to secure that second place as well. And, you know, doing what he's doing at 44 years old is pretty impressive. Uh, and he's been that sport for so long. I think that's awesome to see. Um, it's really cool that he'll be right alongside uh, Justin Rogers, who is younger and, um, you know, still when he's closing out his career. Um, and then I think, yeah, well, I think we'll see Nathan done at third for sure. Um, very nice guy. He's been progressing pretty nicely and pretty consistently under his coach. Um, 
you know, every meet he progresses a lot. He's been he's in big lifts in the gym. So it'll be cool to see him there as well. Um, and then it'll be cool to see other junior representation there mm-hmm. with uh, Michael and Connor. Um, but yeah, I think Justin Rogers runs away with this. Uh, but I don't think he's hitting that Carpino uh, unless maybe he comes out and shocks us. But yeah, I don't I don't think he is. That's, uh, but yeah, I got Justin winning. All right, and then now let's kick it over to Marcus. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I feel like I couldn't agree more. Uh, I just seem like I just see like it's it's too like once again, you know, when you have like that much of like an empath in terms of your class, there's not much that you can do about it, especially you know at this point of people's prep and competition. I mean, you're not you're not exactly here to bolster your total, you know, as much as possible within you know like the week that we have. Um, I do, however, think that nonetheless it's going to be an amazing showing by everyone here. Uh, I think that Carlos showing out, you know, is 44 years old. I mean, he could essentially be my father at that point. Um, and I think that's really crazy um, for someone who, you know, 100% has a complete full life outside of powerlifting doing something like this. And at that level is pretty insane. But I just don't see him, especially at his age and as his uh, as in deep as he is in his powerlifting career, making that large of a jump to, you know, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. All right, Julia. Um, yeah. I mean, I agree with, um, what everyone has said. I see Justin, um, handily winning this. Um, I think, you know, it, I'd like to see him hit the total, but I think that that's probably, um, a bit of a reach at this point. Um, I think, uh, Mikey is doing Sheffield and he has, you know, um, he has a good chance of, I mean, obviously hitting the Carpino total. Um, so that's an interesting dynamic that's at play in this class. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to, um, to seeing um, a 44 year old lifter total, um, you know, above 800. I think that that's, that's really something, you know, and that um, that's something that definitely should be talked about. Um, I think sometimes masters lifters are a little bit skipped over. um, Mm -hmm. So that'll be nice to see. Yeah, and it looks like Carlos has never been to IPF Worlds. It looks like he did. Uh, he made the U.S. national team for North Americans one time in 2019 in Costa Rica and won the M1s. Um, so he's the North American champ in the N- M1 category. Um, but this will be interesting to see because, I mean, if he's coming over to Powerlifting America now, he's probably going to smash it at uh, Masters Worlds this year. Um, and so in this total will go into consideration for the alternate pool um, so that he could qualify for Masters Worlds just through this total um, by itself. So, yeah, that's a really cool – that's definitely going to be a really cool thing. So, all right, looking at overall this session, this is the morning session on day two. Saturday morning we'll wake up, and this will be the crowd that we'll be seeing. We'll have – we have everything from, like, a 15-year-old, 83, that's putting up a crazy bench, all the way to Carlos Santoloquito, the 44-year-old. Um, putting up some crazy in the 800 numbers um, in the in the 105s. Uh, what do you think about this session as a whole? Go ahead, go ahead, Julia. Um, well, um, I'm. I mean, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing uh, Chance Mitchell and Bryce Lewis. Um, I I think it's going to be interesting to see what Chance puts up and um what kind of shape he's in i know he he posts a lot so we know a little bit more about him um but it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see that and you know obviously the battle in the 83s um that's really gonna be a great show i think that that's probably gonna be the best uh battle of the day maybe so um yeah i'm looking forward to it should be eventful yeah two two crazy good battles uh go ahead sam yeah, um, I think I'm probably most likely looking forward to the 83 the most as well. Um, but who knows? I think I think 83 and 93 have insane uh, battle potential. And I think it's going to be awesome to see how both of those classes um, unfold. Uh, it'll be cool to see 
you know, like legend like Bryce Lewis or um, Greg Johnson. Mm-hmm. And then also just to see like young up and comers like Sean Tin, Alex Tidor. Um, I think it's going to be cool to see that, uh, that balance as well. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it'll be an exciting session. Um, you know, those two battles, A393, um, will definitely be awesome to watch. But yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. All right, Marcus, last one. This is going to be a day that I am looking forward to watching. I mean, from, you know, the familiar faces like Champs and Sean, I just think that, you know, they're going to be entertaining you know, no matter what they do, no matter if they come in conservative or go all out. I think that it's going to be entertaining to see what they can do. I also think it's um, really cool to see all these cool people coming, you know, um, like you got uh, Rivera coming all the way from Puerto Rico, see what he's capable of and, you know, putting more international lifters, you know, coming in for powerlifting America to guest lift, you know, putting that concept more on the map, have people, you know, really understand that, um, you know, we're doing things, you know, um, a little bit differently. Um, I think that specifically for this battle, the 83s, um, I'm looking straight at Jack Reynolds, man. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's something that I just can't take my eyes off of. I think it's no matter what he does, I think that he's going to really solidify himself on the map. I think that his decision going to open world, I think it was extremely intelligent from like uh, any sort of like, you know, marketing decision for himself um, to market himself out as a really good up and coming athlete, um, because you have everyone watching because you're you're going to be in the same division as, you know, Sean Jin and for people to, you know, they have no other like the people who are in there in person have no other choice but to see you perform and they're going to think that it's absolutely insane that you can bench, you know, 300 plus as like a 15 year old. Um, but, you know, other than that, I just think that, you know, coming out of the previous session, you know, having people like Taylor Atwood, um, I think that this one is going to, you know, generate, you know, just as much hype. I don't think that it's really going to, you know, remove, you know, itself in terms of expectations. Because when you have something like Taylor Atwood, you know, that's that's the climax of a lot of people, seeing him yeah. perform. and the rest is stuff that, you know, might not be as hype, but to, to see something like this as stacked as, as it is, I think that it's going to be something that people are going to be sticking around for. Yeah. I mean, I think you nailed a re- two really good points in there. Like um, I wish I just, if you're, if you're out there listening to this or you're listening to this next year before next year's nationals and you're a younger lifter, come to open nationals and compete. I mean, put yourself on the same platform, put your, put your name up there with guys like Chance Mitchell, Bryce Lewis and Deuce Gruden and, and Sean Jen and Justin Rogers. Like I just think, and you know, all the other people, you know, Gregory Johnson's like a legend in the game too. And, and we're going to be, I, I, I think you're totally right. The name that people are going to be talking about a lot after this is going to be Jack Reynolds for sure. Like he's going to put himself on the map. Um, I do think Jonathan Rivera coming over from Puerto Rico, um, Wait till you guys see this guy. He's just so full of energy. He's like a showman. Um, I think he's also going to steal the show, even if his total isn't isn't up there. He's also a junior lifter as well. We've got a lot of juniors scattered throughout uh, these weight classes. Um, so I think he's another one where like you get people are going to be noticing him, and then they'll hopefully see him at Junior Worlds later this year, and he'll keep progressing as you know, you know uh, and he'll use this as big motivation for that as well. So I think it's really cool. Um, it's going to be a great way to start the day. Um, and then, and then, yeah, like even juniors like Alex Sidor is in there. I mean, who who's been training has been going really, really well. And we don't know really what he's might be capable of at seven twenty two and a half. I mean, him and Sean battled. At, at nationals last year, you know? So, um, I mean, it was something of a battle. And so I think that'll be another one. And uh, Mike Losa too. That's a guy, like I mentioned, his, his name's Jonathan Losa on there, but he's a crowd favorite. He's also a master's lifter and he'll be bench pressing right up there. He'll, he might win the bench press comp. Uh, he might put up the biggest bench of anyone in this weight class. So it'll be interesting. It'll be a great start to the day. And, um, so for everyone that's tuning in, thank you so much for listening to the powerlifting America podcast. This is a preview show. We've gone through session one. We just finished session two and we'll take a break and pick this back up and we'll finish uh, session three and session four later. So thank you for joining us. And with that, we're out of here. Peace.